Hello and welcome to the TGA Games channel. Today I'm going to spend some time looking at my experiences and opinions of loading software on original Atari computers in 2024. So perhaps like me, uh, you found an old Atari computer in the loft, you've been given one by a family member or perhaps you're looking at buying one from eBay. Uh, chances are you won't have access to a multitude of original software. Um, if you're lucky like me, you may have a few cartridges that you can put straight in the machine. But there's a catalogue of software available for the Atari computer, originally on cassette or disc, uh, which is now available online for you to download. But you'll need a way to load this software on your Atari, particularly if you don't have original disc drive or tape drive working to do this. So if you want to be able to play those games, or load other software on your Atari, then this is the video for you. So, when I unearthed my old Atari, uh, being impatient, the first thing I did was plug the power in, plug the aerial RF lead into an old television, and I was happy to find that I could get a picture straight away. Uh, the unit did indeed still seem to work. Wasn't a great picture, but it was perfectly viewable. What I should have done, however, was check first that the power supply was safe, because I research I've done since. Uh, many of these old power supplies can degrade, they can provide over voltage and they can damage your Atari. I went ahead and replaced this with a USB based power supply and I'll try and provide some links in the description of uh, options that are there for you. Now after I'd sorted out the power for my Atari uh, I was still impatient. I wanted to load software as soon as possible. Um, I had looked at some devices online and actually had something on order but I was curious, uh, the 1010 tape drive that I had uh, couldn't play tapes, I didn't have any anyway, but I wondered, was there a way that I could get the uh, audio tape loading sounds into this device from another way instead of tape? And I managed to do this by uh, hooking up a cable with a 3.5mm jack into my PC, playing a WAV file which was the uh, image of an original tape uh, a game from the 80s, I was able to find the right locations on the 1010 drive circuit board to insert this signal and play it into the Atari, ultimately trick the Atari into thinking it was loading the sounds from tape. So it's a little on the screen on how I did this, but as I say, I wouldn't recommend this, um, still very slow to load, fiddly to do, um, and there's a lot of other options out there for you if you just have a little bit more patience than I did. So that's what we're going to go into now. So the first modern device that I looked at was the S-Drive Max. Now this is a small device that can be attached via the serial I.O. interface on the Atari which you would usually use to connect tape drives or disk drives. It can be powered via that serial I.O. connector or by USB although you need to change jumper on the board to support this um, else I believe you can damage the device if you try and power it by both methods. The device is built on an Adreno board which if you're not familiar is a small single board computer uh, similar to uh, the Raspberry Pi which you may have heard of. Uh, the S-Drive implementation on the Adreno has a small LCD touchscreen and you can use this to navigate the software that uh, you can load from an SD card and mount it as virtual drives which can be seen and loaded by the Atari. Okay, the next device I stumbled across and acquired was the Side 3 cartridge. Uh, this is a device developed by somebody called Candelo Sin uh, with more recent software updates developed by Flash Jazz Cat. Um, the side 3 uses the Atari's cartridge port um, and an SD card to uh, load software from. Uh, its navigation is via a menu system that actually loads on the Atari itself. Uh, the device supports loading of XEX executable files, uh, cartridge ROM image files, uh, ATR disk images. It additionally has functionality allowing it to work in tandem with the Ultimate 1 megabyte upgrade for the Atari, allowing uh, mounting of virtual hard drives emulating the parallel bus interface. The Fujinet device is a little different. Uh, like the S-Drive Max, it uses the Atari's uh, serial I.O. port and uh, primarily navigation is via a menu system that loads on that port uh, like a mounted drive. It allows accessing software locally via the SD card, but it can also join a Wi-Fi network, uh, allowing mounting of software images across a local network or the internet. Okay, here we see we've got the S-Drive Max device on the desk. 
um, it's showing there as it's turned on all the drive stops are empty D1, D2, D3, D4 um, it's powered by USB at the moment there is a jumper on the inside that can allow it to be jumper uh, to powered by SIO but you mustn't plug in the USB power while you're in that mode as it can cause damage to the device if it's receiving power from SIO um, I've opted for USB power um, primarily to make sure the device is always on before the Atari um, and the disc is readily available for it uh, so what we're going to do here is press that uh, by the side of a disc, go into a directory and um, we'll pick a game here. So you can see we can go next page this way, previous page this way, we can go to the last page um, and we can pick something. Uh, you might notice some of these, the file names are truncated on the main screen but as we select them they are actually displayed at the bottom there. So. That's not the end of the world, it's just a question of space. So let's go River Raid and say OK. Uh, that is now mounted in D1, ready to go. So we we'll turn the Atari on. Uh, we don't want basic to load, so I'm holding down Option and turn it on. OK, um, interestingly, this did happen to me before. It's gone into the loader interface so you can see you can actually manipulate the loader via software as well um, and it opted not to boot there. I'm just trying to remember why that is I'm just going to reset an option that seems to be loading now I think maybe I'll check that maybe that's what it does the first time you've plugged that in after a while okay so you can see it's quite easy to load software I can now change the disk on the fly here and choose the next thing that we want to load. So yeah, it's um, relatively easy to navigate around here. One of 2049, there we go. So we'll put that in D1. Turn off the Atari, turn it back on again. The option held. There we go, so it's a neat little device for loading software onto your Atari uh, via the SIO interface, emulating um, physical disks. Um, there is also the option to emulate tape, you may see there. Um, again, it goes into a menu to select. Um, in this case, it would be looking for a tape image. I don't have any on this SD card, but yeah, if you really wanted to do that, you can load the audio tape images and uh, wait for them to load. I think it has a turbo mode, if I remember correctly, but it's not going to be as fast as uh, loading the disk images. Okay, we're taking a little look here at the side free cartridge. So this is what it looks like, and um, there in the top, it's got uh, an SD card, 16 gigabyte card there nicely on the top there and you put that straight into your Atari okay switching the Atari on now and uh, we've got this uh, kind of set up in native mode as if it didn't have the one megabyte upgrade ultimate one megabyte it goes straight to the loader so we'll just load a familiar game here There we go, it's as simple as that. So it loads, uh, it supports multiple fat partitions. Um, it's a very easy to browse menu and um, you know, very quick and easy way. You just you know stick the cartridge straight in and you can access uh, all of your software repositories. So let's just turn that off again now and go back into the loader. see it's nice to navigate menu there so taking a look at this menu here uh, we can see the loader version that I have um, is 0692101023 uh, so it's a year or so old there may well be a later update so this is a good opportunity to show you um, how we would do this and if I just go back to the root of my SD card um, I believe I have a directory called loaders and these are the versions I've got. There's the last one, 0 0.69. If I go into there, there we go. There's the loader, flash loader uh, file. 
so, so basically it supports in place flashing via this software uh, previously um, in like the pre-beta releases uh, it required a cable and specific software but um, all you basically need to do is get your side free ROM into here and um, use the loader to uh, load it on so that's what we're going to do now um, try and do this live as I've not uh, updated this cartridge for a while I have a feeling it will be a later version so we're browsing over to atari8.co.uk and this is Flash Jazz Cat's website if I go to the firmware section scroll down a bit we've got side free loader down there we go zero six nine uh twenty four oh one twenty three and there we go he's not changed it for a while i have the latest firmware okay we're going to have a look now at the fujinet device so here it is here you can see it's kind of shaped like a cartridge but it's not for the cartridge port it goes into the sio port of the atari see from there it has an SD card so it has the uh, ability to have onboard storage uh, USB interface there and uh, there's a mode switch which uh, the mode switch is on top which um, I will bring up the manual information later but the way I'm going to do these reviews however is um, kind of blind I've not actually looked at this device for a while so I've probably forgotten a lot about it um, I've also changed my Wi-Fi network since then, so I'm going to have to definitely add it to Wi-Fi. So, yeah, how easy is it to use the FujiNet just picking it up? Um, not really initiated very well. I mean, that's not entirely true. I've used it before, but, yeah. Don't know what any of the switches do anymore. Right, let's just reach behind my Atari here. Sorry, this is off screen, but we're just plugging this into the SIO port directly. Yep. Just getting that without actually looking. And uh, it has a pass-through port, so you can still have your other SO devices on the chain, be that disk drive or tape drive or whatever you might have. Okay, we can see Fujinet is booting, and we have a network that it remembers. Now, that network doesn't actually exist anymore. I didn't actually do anything. I think it was trying anyway, and now that's just timed out. So, uh, that network doesn't exist anymore. There's a network that does exist locally to me. I'm going to select that and enter the password. Enter the password, and that's saved the network. It's going to try and connect to it now. Hopefully, I've typed my network password correct. Connected to network. Okay, so. The Fujinet device itself has connected to the network. Um, it's being powered by the SOO device at the moment, and ultimately this is what we see. It has joystick control, as you can see, and you have at the top TNFS host list. Uh, so the SD card is the local device. Fujinet Online is a resource, as is Atari Apps Novato Online. These are pre-saved addresses that have been put at the bottom we've got drive slots where things can be uh, assigned so tab was drive slots apologies so uh, we see we have something there it's eject what we have in drive one uh, and eject what we have in there tab back here so first of all we're going to look at the SD card select file games uh, do, do, do something we haven't looked at recently Cosmic Tunnels. Uh, actually, I'm just choosing XEX. Is that possible to run on XEX? Well, I've done it. Let's just see what happens when I do option. You can boot straight to an XEX, not just an ATR. Okay, so here's the game Cosmic Tunnels. Um, we just simply boot this loads. I do like this game actually, it's kind of nice. But there we go, so that's from the SD card. So we're going to power off the Atari and bring it back on again because that's not very exciting. Let's try another repository Fujinet Atari 8 bit.net. 
Okay. This is organized into year. Now that is interesting. So let's go. Oh, the early years, definitely. And it's then sorted in the software house. See, most of the repositories I've seen have been sorted alphabetically, so this is kind of refreshing. Uh, English software. There's a few titles of those that I remember. Oh, wonderful. This, this is a great way to look for games, actually. Hijack, spotted there. Hijack was the game that I first tried to load when I resurrected my Atari a few years ago from a WAV image through um, a soldered interface into my tape drive, which I might have mentioned earlier. So we're going to load it the proper way. Yep, I think that's mounted properly, so we can press Option. Wow. Seems to freeze on the mountain boot page now. Right, I'm going to reset and press Option. to boot there. I'm not going to hold option and let go. Right, nothing. I'm sure there's no basic programs in RAM. Okay, I'm going to reboot again. So this is proving a little bit troublesome. It's starting to wonder what I'm missing. Um, I refuse to read the instruction manual again. You know, this should be intuitive. That's kind of the point of the test I'm doing. Um, see what else we've got. C for config. That's the network information. And that looks fine. Any other key to return? Something's in the drive slot. Option is boot. Yeah. It's as simple as that, isn't it? So let's press option. Okay, it's trying to boot this time. Oh, that's better. Okay, so maybe I was just not giving it enough time or something. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly game working perfectly. Does what it's supposed to. Might have to have a little game of this one in the near future. So that was a quick demo of loading games on the FujiNet from a couple of internet repositories. Um, it's asking me there to connect to network again and it's remembering it. So, what else can you do? Well, you can set up your own TNFS server. Uh, you can research running the software on your own local PC or local network and uh, keep your own repository of software and host it locally to yourself. Um, or you can, as I say, copy your software to the SD card or you can rely on one of these archives. Or you can look for other archives online. So let's just do that on the fly here. Fujinet PL has a list and there's a few there. So, and Let's put one of these hosts into a slot. Okay, edit slot is E on the keyboard, I see. So, uh, what should we do? www.nabrhmd.com. So, we've not been to this one at all, but as long as it's got a TNFS server on it, as this list seems to imply, we should be able to connect to it. Let's have a look at that. The reason TNFS was chosen is it's a very simple protocol. It's got very low overhead. Obviously, this is all public. We're not authenticating here. So, it's another nice Atari repository. Ah, one of the traditional alphabetized games repositories. So, so what do we think of the user interface? Well, it's functional. I'm holding the joystick down here going through various pages. It's not particularly quick. It's not accelerating as I go through. And there we go. Original Galaxian, hopefully, 1982 or ATR. Uh, so we're going to try and mount that on top of that drive that we already had. And we're going to press escape, check it's there. So, yeah, I just find all this coming in and out like that just a little bit clunky. It's just me. I think this is designed to be maybe a lot more advanced than the ways that I'm trying to use it just to boot software. 
okay, what's going on here? Slow repository, maybe? No, we've gone back to basic. Okay, let's reset. I'll do reset help for the ultimate mobile. Right, I'll press C, I get cold boot without actually having to flip that switch. It's got a little hack there. Okay, it's a flashing orange light on the Fujinet now. No, it's not very happy with that. Okay, so it's at this stage where I'm thinking whatever's happening, am I doing something wrong or is there a problem with the device, is there a problem with loading from the particular repository I'm choosing I'm just thinking to myself well it's just clunky, it's the whole, not the device itself, don't get me wrong, just this mechanism um, of loading things from random repositories I mean it's wonderful you know what you're actually doing here you're using the internet you're loading software across the internet onto your Atari who the thought we'd be doing that I mean that is just great but uh, I just don't know I don't know any of these games I really don't but let's just select something else at random just to see if we can get something to boot on this device okay so I've mounted it go back it's showing us mounted I press option mountain boot okay so a game is loading across the internet again there we go it works um, that's German though so select one speaker one player isn't it so okay um, a yeah, game I've never seen so I'm moving left and right and oh yes it's the blue thing that's me I thought I was the uh, whatever that other thing is yep okay not a particularly great game but just proving we can run something so yeah okay what else can we talk about on the Fujinet um, well there's a few things um, I'm going to go and reset and go back into it and look for its IP address because I want to refresh my memory on what the web interface looks like um, I could do an IP scan of my network, but it could be a lot easier just to go to config and see there what it's got on my network, 202. What do we see here? So we've got the basic standard host name. It's got my network config details, a little bit of information about the hardware. Uh, so is my SD card and the uptime, not very long. Okay. Shows what I've got mounted. I can eject from there. If I, let's try SD card for example. You can, so I can browse the SD card. That's not a very good example. Let's just go to my old games again and find a piece of software. I wasn't actually aware of this. That's maybe a bit short sighted of me using this before. So if I set Alley Cat, uh, I can then put it into a drive slot. That's kind of interesting. So. Read or read, right? Okay, it just needs to be read, and this is operation successful. Very interesting. So, we have a, another way of loading, but we, it's still kind of the same mechanism. You were selecting the software, then you were selecting the drive you wanted to mount it in. It wasn't a case of just sort of click, double click the software, run, doesn't quite work like that. But you see, we've mounted Alicat via the web interface. We can then press the option key and it's loading that game. So, okay, so I guess if you've got a good repository, it seems quite consistent. Um, okay, so what do I like about it? Yep, yeah, it's amazing. Yes, you can load Atari software from the internet. Um, not something I've looked into, but there's also um, ability to play certain games that have been developed using APIs by, uh, I believe it's like Thomas Cherry Holmes who created the Fujinet. Um, has um, basically these opened, open source the software so there's a lot of, sort of code development with other people going on I understand um, and there's been the ability to play multiplayer games, very simple multiplayer games on Fujinet um, and also there's Fujinet enabled high scores versions of games certain games so you can get a high score and you can you know paste them up via the internet so that's all interesting collaborative stuff and making good use of the hardware um, Let's just have a quick flip back.
and just see what else we can discover before we round this up because yeah I like this device and I think it's got a lot of potential but it's been around a while so saying something's got potential that's been around a while you know why am I saying that well it, it all just comes back to this interface you know this whole I'm in the top bit I've got a tab to get to the bottom bit it's just I don't know it could definitely be cleaned up and I'm, I'm not an interface designer <sighs> I say um, so I bought this because wow network Atari brilliant but has it really added to what I can do I could already load software onto my Atari via side free via SO to USB uh, so yeah not too sure yet why I bought this device and apart from the cool factor um, and the usability of it is interesting should I say so yeah, I'd like to spend a lot more time with this device and come back to it. But, you know, if somebody wants to get up and running and play games, not sure what I can say at this stage. So we'll uh, come back and uh, round up conclusions a little bit later. OK. OK, the last device that I think we're going to look at here is a little bit different. Um, very small device, if I just look this up here. And looks like just an SIO connector but there are some electronics in there and there you go there's a micro USB adapter on the back uh, so this is the SIO to USB um, what this is is ultimately um, an SIO interface to USB hence the name um, but it needs some software running on the PC to uh, emulate an SIO device which can then be mounted from the PC's desktop. So the PC runs in emulation mode um, and ultimately provides the images from whatever media your hard drives on your PC presumably um, and then maps them to devices so when the Atari tries to access D1, D2, whatever you've got mounted um, it will try and boot that device or you can load software from that device from DOS or what have you. So um, uh, there's a few pieces of software for this. Um, I haven't gone back into the history recently. I think there was Aspect QT, but uh, the latest Respect QT, R E S P E Q T, Atari Serial Peripheral Emulator. Um, I understand around uh, I think 5.2 or 5.3 um, development sort of stalled. Someone else has picked up and created a new GitHub repository. I'm not going to name any of the names because I haven't. Uh, read into this project in a whole lot of depth but I understand somebody else is now running with the project it's at 5.4 release candidate 4 I believe I saw it was um, I've run a slightly earlier version of 5.4 I think it was RC1 or RC2 um, and I did find um, some stuff I was trying to do where I was imaging from old um, Atari five and a quarter inch discs a collection that um, I picked up from eBay uh, I was using an Atari 1050 drive, trying to image to um, a disc mounted through that software, and I was finding much more luck on that 5.4 release candidate than I was on the previous uh, full release. Load the Respect QT software, we'll just eject, we do have the previous disc image there. So, right, okay, so if I click uh, the disc symbol, we can quite easily here uh, select, we'll go for pole position here, and that is now mounted. Um, so we will get ready to turn on the Atari input uh, but I just want you to see here I'm turning on the Atari now holding down the option key so I don't know basic you're gonna see hopefully it shows that it's loading from this D1 device there you go there goes the load and if I flip to the Atari's input, you can see it is loading there. Let's give it a little bit longer, and there we go. We have pole position uh, ready to play. If I just press start on the keyboard, it's loaded perfectly. So, yeah, very simple. From your PC, you can store all your software um, on your PC hard drive that you've downloaded, and ultimately uh, mount it that way. So I actually think this is incredibly cheap and convenient device. I wasn't the first one I went for, um, but it has been super useful, certainly for the drive imaging. Um, maybe not my daily go-to device, although it could be. You know, it's quite easy to uh, load that up on the PC and mount your drives. But yeah, as I say, I, I tend to use one of the other solutions a little bit. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But 
definitely something great to have in my arsenal. Um, you know, the, the, talked about disc imaging earlier on. I was having trouble with some of the other uh, solutions, and this has just served me incredibly well. So, um, yeah, definitely thought it was worth a mention. Um, that's pretty much it. There, you can mount XEX files as well as disc images. Um, you create disc images, blank ones for the purposes of imaging. Yeah, all sorts of things you do with this, so we won't go into depth. But there we go. That's um, SIO to USB uh, and utilizing the uh, Respect QT software for uh, your PC. Well, I hope you've enjoyed or found this video interesting. Um, I've swiftly gone over some of the modern devices that I've used, uh, which allows you to access mass storage for loading games on the 8-bit Atari. Uh, there are a number of things to consider when making a choice about your best solution for loading software on the Atari. Uh, why don't we start with the price? Well, the last device I looked at, um, which I didn't include in my introduction, uh, because it uh, basically requires a PC, it's not a standalone device. The SIO to USB interface uh, costs around about £25-26 and um, that's prices from my closest reseller in the UK. Um, so a very cheap solution but it does require a PC. Uh, the S Drive Max, um, I couldn't see from a reseller but um, I originally sourced mine from eBay. It's something that you could also get in kit form but um, a fully uh, put together version costs uh, around about sort of £35-40 I've seen them for on eBay. Now, uh, the Side 3 cartridge, I believe you can only buy the uh, Side 3.1 hardware revision now, that is $94.95, so a little bit more expensive. Uh, what you get from that though is a um, device that plugs into your Atari's uh, cartridge port, the software loads through the Atari uh, itself, nice interface and um, it has full sort of ROM support as well as the ATR disk images, something uh, that's not always done by these devices. Um, then there's FujiNet, um, the instance that I could see from a, a relatively local reseller is currently $74.95, a um, little bit cheaper than I'm not sure if that's the cost I originally bought and also uh, currently it looks like the case is a bit bigger, it's uh, not that version that um, I had which uh, connects to the back of your uh, SIO on your Atari. Uh, but there is other ways to source these um, across the internet, eBay and what have you, a variety of free 3D printed case so um, you may still be able to get the form factor that I originally had. Um, also I'm sure I've admitted a number of different devices out there, I'll mention a few, the AVG cart, the Ultimate cart, the Uno cart, um, as far as I know they uh, being cartridges all provide um, ROM image support um, and then of course the Side 2 which is the predecessor to the Side 3. Um, so, Cost is one thing, um, that's something you can think about. But in terms of usability, um, what what is the best? Um, I mean, it's difficult to say because they all do slightly different things. Um, for me, although I think the FujiNet um, has got a lot of promise, um, it's incredible what it can do. Um, I have some issues with the interface. Um, maybe the way I'm using it isn't quite right, but it basically that was the longest part of this video just because of some of the issues that I had and the time it took spending time actually with the interface not running the games that I was trying to load the side three I think let's cut to the chase is my favorite device out of all of these um, I just love the interface um, it's got great support um, I've upgraded uh, for several versions of the firmware. I think I was one of the sort of early adopters, um, and yeah, just it works. You know, it, it does what it says. It's a relatively short section of this video, but um, that basically is a testament to uh, the little time you spend in the interface. You just uh, load what you want to do um, and load your games if that's what you're solely using it for. But it does a multitude of other things um, especially in conjunction with the ultimate one megabyte uh, which where you get that hard drive support as well um, so yeah s drive max nice little device as well it was the first uh, mass storage device that i was using can't knock it it does what it says on the tin um, but it's basically an sio device um, i just prefer that ability to plug a cartridge straight in and off you go 
um, if I'm completely honest with you there. But also, finally, the SIO to USB, you know, that solution to load stuff straight from your PC, um, you can't knock that. That's a very useful thing to do. So there you go. I hope this has been helpful. Um, please do your research. Uh, there's as much information as I can provide in the description when I upload this video. I will, um, but ultimately, um, yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can play Atari today. Uh, if you don't want to play original hardware, there's also a uh, multitude of emulators out there. Again, I'll put some details in the description of ones that I know of. Uh, and there's also uh, numerous modern devices that have come out recently, new hardware devices, um, both um, produced by Atari themselves, as the company is now, and other people with um, licensing uh, so that you can connect these machines to modern televisions more simply than it is with a retro Atari. But for me, um, I wanted to use original hardware, uh, so these are some of the modern devices that make that just a little bit easier to do today. Okay, so again, um, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Please let me know if you'd like any more content like this or sort of more of my traditional gaming content. Um, I'd love you to like this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see my further videos. And um, yeah, that's it. I'll wrap this up. Um, have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.